even on slowing growth. Streaming video on demand revenues are expected to reach $124 billion in the next five years, nearly double the 2020 amount. But that doesn't mean that all streaming services will survive, and recent news could mean that a lot of these stocks go nowhere. I'll show you why Netflix could be the last streamer standing, and even as the most expensive in this group, might still produce the best returns versus Disney, Paramount, WBD, and Comcast. Video on demand streaming was one of the biggest disruptions of the new millennium when Netflix started streaming in 130 countries in 2007. The company had been mailing DVDs since 1998, if you remember that, but released its cable killer in 2007, growing subscribers to over 104 million in the next decade. And with those pandemic lockdowns, growth in streaming made Netflix and its competitors investor favorites. From the pandemic low to 2021 peak, shares of Netflix more than doubled, while Comcast jumped more than 50%, and Paramount Global surged 700% over that period. Streaming is now the largest TV media source at 36% of TV viewing time. Cable is still second with just under a third the total TV time seen here. But that growth is slowing and viewers are tuning out to a lot of these streaming services. Nearly 25% of US subscribers to streaming services have canceled at least three of their subscriptions over the past two years. That's according to data here by analytics provider Antenna. That's up from just 15% two years ago and more than 6% of subscribers cancel their services each month. That's up from 4.5% last year and just creating a major headache of retention and subscription subscriber acquisition costs for these streaming services. Keeping viewers has become a big problem for streaming services, with net gains pretty much flat. It seems after an initial honeymoon period where everyone was trying out every streaming service, consumers have just become more fickle and are ditching services they don't use, just kind of like the, how they cut the cord. But that projected growth in streaming revenues is still an opportunity, but not for every service out there. We've already seen a switch to ad-supported streaming and may see more consolidation over this industry over the next few years as, as streaming desperately tries to reach profitability. It means not all the streaming stocks are going to survive, or if they are, they could be dead money for years, and why you need to be careful picking the winners here. We'll dive into those numbers for each of the major streaming stocks next, but you can find all of these along with some great features on the Moomoo Moo app. You'll get all the fundamental analysis we talk about here on the channel, like stock valuation multiples, revenue breakdown, and estimates. Where Moomoo Moo really excels though is in the options analysis tools, showing you key open interest, volume, and any unusual option activity that might be a clue into unusual activity or institutional trading. With Moomoo, Moo, you get extended trading hours from 4 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern and 24-7 professional customer support. Trade commission-free on stocks, ETFs, and options with one of the lowest margin rates out there at just 6.8%. Plus, new users on Moomoo Moo can enroll in the Cash Suite program and earn 5.1% APY on their uninvested cash. Look for the link I'll leave below and you'll get five free stocks plus free level two trading data when you get started with as little as $100 and up to 15 free stocks with larger deposits of $1,000 or more. Moomoo Moo Financial is a member of the SIPC, which means your stocks are protected up to $500,000. Moomoo Moo is also a registered broker dealer and a member of FINRA. I want to thank Moomoo Moo for sponsoring this part of the video. Look for the link below and get started and get your free stocks. Back to our main topic, we're going to go over revenue and fundamentals later, but Netflix still dominates by subscriber base at 240 million subs as of mid-2023. Disney was supposed to be the big growth engine in streaming, growing to 100 million subs faster than any other service, but has since slowed down. <coughs> Marvel. It's now stalled around 150 million subscribers, followed by Warner Brothers, Discovery here, Paramount, Hulu, and Comcast Peacock. And besides that increase in subscriber cancellations, production costs have become the big problem here and a key factor of why I think Netflix could be your best investment. As of last year, only Netflix was profitable on its streaming segment, though Warner Brothers has a profitable quarter and the others are profitable company-wide. Netflix booked over $4.5 billion in income over the last four quarters and $5.6 billion in free cash flow. That and one key advantage in how Netflix produces its shows could propel the company even further in the years to come. A drop in advertising post-pandemic has seen orders for scripted shows fall off a cliff last year and is going to start to show through in available programming this year. Disney slammed on the brakes, cutting its orders for more than 20 shows to less than five. Most of these major streamers here cut their show orders down to 10, with Netflix the standout king of content. While the company did also cut its orders last year, it was still set to produce as much as four times the number of shows versus its peers. Besides that drop in ad sales, production costs are going to weigh on these streaming services. Last year's writers and actors strikes were a major win for the unions. It's going to drive up those costs higher for the studios. The writers union alone estimates the value of their three year deal at $233 million annually with a 50% bonus on successful streaming shows and minimum guarantees for the number of writers per show as well as increased pay. 
The actor strike also secured a streaming participation bonus salary increase and an increase in the use of extras for an estimated contract value over $1 billion. Those increased costs will hit Netflix as well, but not as hard because of a key advantage, the amount of shows the company produces overseas. Not only is more than half of Netflix shows produced overseas, but remember, it's producing about four times as many shows as its competitors. That's important because the overseas production is going to be much cheaper, not falling under much of those union costs U.S. produced shows have to pay. Disney and Comcast both produce almost 40% of their shows overseas, but Warner Brothers and Paramount are at just 25% of their content. The result here is just going to be a lot of inexpensive, bingeable content for Netflix subscribers, keeping them paying every single month. Netflix is already a favorite among viewers, with 66% of its service subscribers listing it as essential. Disney and Hulu also cracked better than 50%, while Comcast, Peacock, and Apple TV ranked lowest among major streamers in a survey of nearly 2,000 U.S. streaming customers across 16 services. And not only is Netflix the most profitable out there, but also gets more out of its users. Its average revenue per user is more than double that of Disney+, Plus and well above the other services. Netflix charges the highest price tiers, though its ad-supported tier is competitive starting at $6.99 a month. This way, it gets subscribers in the door, keeps price-conscious customers, and then upgrades others into that higher-price ad-free service. The shift to ad-supported streaming has helped to recharge some of that subscriber growth. 60% of Disney Plus subscribers in November opted for the ad-supported tier and nearly a third of Netflix users are ad-supported at this point. But if you think about this, if only a third are paying that discounted price, that leaves a lot of Netflix's 240 million subscribers paying that much higher pricing tier and producing that much higher revenue per user. Now, as is usually the case, the fundamentals and what we know about each stock is reflected in prices. I've laid out some of the fundamentals for the five major streaming stocks in two tables here. First, we see subscriber growth stagnated last year. This is for the year-over-year -year growth to the second quarter, but it remains a problem for all five. We could even see these subscriber stats look worse through 2024 as that slowdown in show production last year really hits this year's content availability. Revenue growth has also slowed down except for Warner Brothers, which had an abysmal 2023, so some of that growth is just a rebound this year. But it's really the profitability margins I want to look at. The streamer's ability to produce content shows at a lower cost is going to be a key factor in which survive over the next few years. And here we see Netflix and Comcast both do very well on costs with operating margins above 20% and net profitability above 12%, while the other streamers are all struggling. We do see that growth and profitability reflected in price multiples, though Netflix trades at nearly 50 times on a price-to-earnings basis. It's almost twice as expensive as Disney or Paramount and four times that of Comcast multiples. But because these companies are highly indebted, I also want to look at the enterprise value to revenue multiple that enterprise value is just the market value of the shares minus balance sheet cash. So how much cash they have on the balance sheet, but then adding in debt. So it's a way to value a stock, including its debt and important whenever you're looking at these highly leveraged companies. Here also, Netflix is very expensive, trading at over 6.6 .6 times. In fact, more than three times as expensive as its peers. Besides that profitability and growth, investors are rewarded for paying that higher price. Netflix's return on equity, the net income divided by its shareholders' equity, is the highest in the group. So putting all this together, shares of Netflix are certainly not the cheapest, but the company has some key advantages that are going to allow it to keep growing while, while some of these other streaming providers may struggle or even fold. It's one of the few to learn how to produce that content profitably and ramping up that content this year and next. That should help it grow its subscribers and keep them while those other struggles struggle with that churn, that retention rate of customers. Its foreign content production is genius and really helps it to avoid a lot of the costs. I, I hate to use anecdotal evidence in my analysis, but two of the four members of my family are absolutely hooked on Netflix foreign shows. My wife is binging just about every K-drama out there in, from Korea, and a lot of the Latin American teen shows are a hit with my daughter. For its sheer size and finances, I think Disney also survives here, but limps along unless it can recharge that Star Wars and Marvel franchises. Comcast could be the highest return, but also the highest risk bet here. It's the least expensive on a PE basis, and it's some respectable growth off a smaller base with the profitability to make it work. It's also the most heavily indebted, though, with a 122% debt-to-equity ratio, so not without the risks here. Of the five streamers here, I would be least likely to invest in Paramount or Warner Brothers Discovery here. Both are highly indebted and don't have that growth or the profitability to compete before that debt becomes a problem. Get up to 15 stocks when you start investing on the Moomoo app, along with a 5% yield on your cash. Or click on the video to the right for some of my favorite passive income dividend stocks to pay your bills. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.